All right, now that we have uh, completed the measurement, we are going to get into sketching techniques. So this is the first part of section four of the unit on design and modeling. So now we're going to start applying uh, those measurement skills into some sketching practice. Here's just a few examples of how sketching could or can be used and some of the techniques you use in this presentation. By the way, this will go with activity 1.4.1, sketching techniques. So as we're going through this, uh, you can uh, complete that document. The purposes of sketching help us think through a design, convey our ideas, and we use lines and symbols to describe a design. And here are just a few examples. Some common uses of sketching, communication, as you can see in the picture, we're using uh, sketches or drawings to communicate an idea. We also use them in brainstorming, um, as you can see in the picture. In the case of the one on the top, basically that is brainstorming ideas for what a screen may look like or how it may perform in an app. And then we also use it to document measurements. This happens to be all of the measurements for an iPhone 5, and we'll be getting into more technical drawing, but you can see how precise measurement really comes into play. So we had an example of this in the measurement activity for the skimmer um, for you to build uh, that piece. Can you imagine uh, all the steps here to build basically the outside case for an iPhone? The advantages of sketching include being convenient and inexpensive. Some of the sketching techniques, which this is where you might want to be in your notes uh, for activity 141. For doing a line, basically we have verticals, horizontals, and inclined, which is the rise over run. Now we're going to actually practice sketching a line. First step, draw two points. Just like we did in the measurement activity, you have to have two points of ref reference. Once you have done that, especially using grid paper, you can connect with a dashed line. This is going to help us, without using any kind of a straight edge, try to draw a fairly straight line. And then the third step is to basically fill in and use as a guide the dashed lines to draw as straight a line as possible. You will now need to practice that on page two of 141. Pause if you need to. The sketching techniques for a circle are a little different. Step one, we need to set up the diameter. This will be the overall size of the circle. As you can see in the top right hand corner, uh, some erase marks. We're going to take you through building that circle. Step number two, square in the diameter. A circle, believe it or not, when freehand sketched, starts out as a square. Step number three, sketch the diagonals. So basically connecting the horizontals uh, with the vertical by taking off of that angle. So we're dividing basically each of those boxes in half diagonally. Once we have done that, we can easily identify the triangular centers, as you can see by uh, those um, hash marks. So put those into the center of each of those squares um, because ev the triangles on either side of that square are equal. You can see by how they're divided. So basically the center would be a mark somewhere in the center of that square. And then finally we're going to sketch the arcs. So we're going to freehand and we use these points as reference as basically a guide. Not asking you to draw a complete arc but half of an arc, another half, and completing it all the way through. Once you're done and practice in your packet, you can erase the lines. You're ending up with a circle, like in the picture in the top right. Practice this a few times, 
and go ahead and pause the video. The alphabet of lines. We have different line types. So here are the examples from the packet. The first line, which is very light, is known as a construction line. The second line, which is heavier, is an object line. The dashed ones are what we refer to as hidden lines, often uh, referring to a hidden object uh, in a view that we will draw. And then the final one is a center line. Notice that it looks similar to a dash, but it is a pattern of long, short, long. Would you please label these in your packet? You can pause the video. Now we're going to see all of those lines being used. You can see by the arrow, the construction line is basically how we are drawing, like we did in the circle. Um, those, in this case, this arc for uh, this piece. We have an object line, which is the heavy one, which actually represents the outer border of this shape. We have a hidden line, which you can see by the dashed marks. That means that somehow in there is a hidden line. In this example, um, this is actually a cutaway view. On the right hand side where it's solid white, that is what the object would look like um, you know, if we would have uh, the ability to hold it in our hands. And the dash line refers to basically a hole that is cut through it, but not all the way through it. That's why it's hidden. When we look at it in the one on the left where it's cross, kind of cross hatched, that means that that has been basically taken away and we are seeing that drawing from inside or cut the object in half. So in that case we can actually see the hole and that's why on the bottom left hand side of that circle it's solid rather than dashed. The center line on the left hand side is basically long short long that is showing or identifying the center point of that hole which again would be coming well not again would be coming from the top down so again in the cross um, section we can see that center point and it's solid on both sides if we go over to the same kind of hole on the right um, you can see that it's dashed again because it's hidden in there we don't see it from the outside All right, so what I would like you to do is, if you need to review this, go ahead and do that, but label everything in the packet. You will then complete your conclusion questions. For this part of it, I would like us to start using your Google Drive Design and Modeling Notebook. So just the conclusion questions. What I would like you to do is type up the question, answer them, and put them into the notebook that you have created for design and modeling um, in Google Drive. Once you've completed that, the packet is complete, you will then uh, be allowed to, for the rest of the period, work on your crossword puzzle, which will be due um, within the next few days. So this is giving you a, a rare chance to get some work done without having it um, done outside of the class. Please work on this individually. You can use my website, um, my wiki, dublinschools.wiki.com or gmstech.wiki.dublinschools.net um, if you would like to use that for um, finding out what the terms mean but you should be able to complete most of that during this class period and there's your image resources have a good Friday and I will see you next week